Right, what have we got today? Well, before I start this, bear with me here. I may be a little bit slow today, but um, it's not long since I've had an operation, so I'm not in the best of health. So I will endure through this though, because I like to get through these. And uh, bearing in mind the pile of review samples is now starting to hit the ceiling. So on the road, 311, that's what we're looking at today. Now it's a shorter flashlight, and I know some people say, ah, they're no good, you need an 18650, but okay, that's a good point, but I still think for a short flashlight, which is something I ADC every day here, just two examples, the On The Road M3 and the M3 Pro on the left here, both excellent EDCs. I mean, you could argue an EDC could be something like the uh, S43 S by Astrolux. Bit heavy with the, um, the brass here, sorry, copper but it's doable and I like the form factor it fits in skinny jeans pockets and things like that so not so bad so I'll put them out of the way and we'll talk about what I'm supposed to be talking about so this is the on the road 311 now you may know th on the road because I'm always going on about them I highly rate them um, I've EDC this many a time and the same with the M3 Pro um, for those who aren't aware of them I've never had a, I've never had any bother with them the only bother I've ever had is the uh, paint slowly comes off but I, you can say that about most brands other than maybe Jetbeam who have lovely thick paint I don't know how they do it but also it's beautiful stuff um, but I'm looking forward to having a look at this so this uses the Cree XM hyphen L2 U3 LED which is the emitter so that's what fires the light out and it's using a CR123 or a 16340 battery basically. Um, a little example I'll show you here on the M3. Now they do give you a free battery which is quite interesting. So here on the M3 I use a CR123 by uh, Nightcore. Now obviously this is named slightly different. It's RCR123, that just means rechargeable. So um, don't put a non-R in a charger, you'll end it with sparks. So I'll pop that in there. So I'm looking forward to having a look at this because it's got Type-C charging, which I love. So let's have a look at this. So the box looks pretty nice. Let's get this open. It only comes in one tint at the moment. Um, so this is the tint uh, about 6,000 to 5,000 K, but we'll, we'll go through that. Now here's the manual. Now I don't normally read these, but I'll, I'll definitely not read this because look, it's all in Chinese. And my understanding of Chinese is rudimentary at best. So even if I wanted to read that, I'm out of luck. Unless I want to go and study Chinese for five years. So let's see what's in the box and then I'll show you the actual unit itself. So there's your cable. Pop that in. And I like the way they've put this on here. There are accessories here. In other words, here, hang on, don't throw this in the bin. So let's see what is in here. Oh, nice. So some little bits and pieces. Get them all out. There's the unit with a little, almost a neoprene cover. Right, so there's nothing else in that box. That can be binned, right? Drop kick that. Okay, let's go through the accessories first. So here's your lanyard. This goes around the end of the light and it allows you to put this around your wrist and there's a little cinch here, which cinches it up to whichever setting you want there. It's not the worst lanyard I've ever seen. It's pretty nice. It's almost like a double, like a double walled system, like the Olight. They have like a material and they have a material over the top and it gives it a nice sort of sponginess. Yeah, so pretty good and it's branded on the road. Very nice. Even though that looks like um, that's been sewn in by someone's granny. You know, when she used to make you wear uh, jumpers for Christmas. So it's the thought that counts and it looks tough enough. I'll just give this a, a, a pull, see if it's... Yeah, that's not coming out. Fair enough, that works. So I'll put that one side. I don't really use lanyards, but I, I, I know a lot of subscribers do like them. And here's two spare O-rings. Now they're very important. So the, what's the O-ring for? So I'll pop this out of this case. So the O-ring is so you can put it between two machine parts. So there's one there. So you can see you've got a screw section and then you have, I'll show you an up close here. So there's the O-ring there, which I'm manipulating with my fingernail. So you can see it moving there. So what that does is that ensures waterproofing between the two machined parts where, where they're threaded. So nice to see you get two free ones. So I'll put them to one side and then you have your charging cable. Now, before I go any further, I want to cover this. So this has USB charging built in. 
So what you can do, once I've removed the cover, is charge without having to take the battery out. So I'm going to take this plastic cover out. Now they put that in just to prevent the circuit from completing during shipping, which is a safety feature. So I'll just show you the charging. So now I happen to have a type C cable here. So let's have a look. So if you unscrew the top section and you have a look, Ta da there you go, there's your type C charging. So on the road, so all you do is you just plunk this in and then you get a little LED lights up. Can you see that there? So that lights up to let you know that charging is taking place. And then when you take that out, that blue light will distinguish. There you go. So pretty good. Now, I was interested to see on my last video that someone was very annoyed that I constantly champion type C. Now, the reason I constantly champion type C is because I'm sick and tired of having to carry an old fashioned micro usb cable everything i use now uses type c my power bank in fact where is it this is old now old power bank and yet look it's able to take type c right the laptop takes type c my phone that i use takes type c the phone i had before that for two years takes type c the computer uses type c so you can see what, what i'm trying to get at is there's a pattern forming here everything i use including my gopro uses type c i don't want to carry another damn cable now the other point made by the subscriber who was a little bit annoyed with me said hang on stop complaining about not having type c because type c makes things bigger and he's right, that's not inaccurate, and I shall show you why. So if I find an old, there's one. So here's a type C. So let's see if he's correct, and I would say he is correct. So there is a size difference. So this is the type C, which is the old fashioned type that I don't like. And then this is type C, which is a new type where you can put it in that way or that way, it doesn't matter. The orientation is unimportant, it's what's even better. But look, there's a slight difference in size. So if I put, the best way to see it, the width is marginally thicker, but from top to bottom, if I put these together, you can see there's like a millimeter's difference. So he, he is correct. Type C makes things bigger. But what would you rather have? Would you rather carry another goddamn cable or add one millimeter in width to a flashlight? In my personal opinion, and it's just my opinion, I would rather have the Type C and it's future proofed and it means that you can charge things faster. So I just wanted to go over that because um, when I get comments from people saying they don't agree with things, I think they deserve to be discussed because I'm not right all the time. It's important to get different opinions. So moving on with the review. So this is an IPX6. Now IPX6 just means it's not really waterproof. I presume it's probably because of this. They're never really waterproof here and sometimes up the front they, they neglect to put in um, proper O-rings and things like that. So IPX6 means it's not properly waterproof. I prefer an IPX8 seven minimum i don't know why this isn't at least a seven because it's screwed um they could have done maybe it's a little bit better in that regard but it, it will work um and like i say you've got your type c charging so i'm pretty impressed with that so what i want to do is i want to go through how you activate this and then i can tell you about things like memory mode and things like that so you've got three main modes although by reading this you would think there was sort of one two three four modes so you think, oh, is there four modes? Well, I don't speak Chinese. Well, I do speak some Chinese, but I, I, my reading ability of it is poor. So when I first saw this, I was a bit bemused, but I, th I think I know what's going on. So I'll put that down. I'll try and explain. I think you've got three main, main modes and a special mode. So your main modes are, so you just click on and off. It's as simple as that. And then a half press changes modes or you can on off changes modes. It cycles through them like that, you see? So I'm gonna start on the low. So that's the lowest there. So on lowest, they're saying that's four lumens and they're quoting on the battery that they give you at 75 hours. That's pretty impressive. And it's low enough where you can get most jobs done. The unfortunate thing is I would have rather have seen a one lumen mode. The reason being is it's not too much and it's just enough in the dark where it's not going to ruin night vision. I would have personally preferred to have seen that, but okay, never mind. So that's low, and then you've got, oops, if I can go back to the right mode, turn it on, 
Uh, that's medium. So medium is 50 lumens and that's seven hours runtime on this battery that they're stating. So that's pretty good. So seven hours, 50 lumens, that's pretty good. And it's light enough. Um, it's doing the job. And then if we turn it back on, there, you've got high. So high is 200. And, well, I mean, it says 280 here, but as far as I'm concerned, high is 720 lumens. So that's a pretty good output. I think this 280 lumens is step down. That's my guess. I think once it's, because they're saying this is heat activated, once this reaches to a temperature that's too high for it to sustain, I think it's gonna step down from 720 to 280. And I think it's probably gonna do that around 40 Celsius. I'll just grab my temperature gauge. Here it is. And we'll see what sort of temperatures we're getting here. I'll pop that on there. So at this moment in time, we're getting about 25 degrees. So we'll leave that ring just for a, a moment. Um, now, the other mode it does have is a, a strobe mode. But before I go into that, I want to try and get this to step down. I don't think I'm going to do it because I have done some preliminary testing and I wasn't, I wasn't able to. Even at 40 degrees, it still didn't step down. So my thoughts on this may be that it takes at least 45 to 50 Celsius before it steps down, which is pretty good for a small flashlight. And the, the heat isn't traveling too bad. You can't use this without having to hold it like that so you're not getting singed fingers. So you've got your three modes. Now, the, the, the UI is strange. It doesn't go low, medium, high. It's, it, it goes backwards. So if I, do, if I show you, so you've got, so low, high, medium, low, high, medium. I think the reason it does that, um, well, I, I did initially think the reason would be that you could st you'd straight away you could get a high because there's no way of getting to a turbo. But that doesn't make any sense because there's a memory mode on this. And the memory mode says that once you run anything for about three seconds, it's always going to memorize the mode. So run it for three minutes in any mode and it'll keep going. So that's quite interesting. So we'll turn that off. Um, now, some things I wanted to talk about. Um, there are some, like I say, there's a hidden mode. So if you put it on any mode and double press, it takes you straight to strobe. And I'll cover that because I don't want to annoy epileptics and things like that. So that's your hidden mode, they call it. So again, a confusing manual where you've got low, medium, high, and then another high. I think that's your step down rate. So you can ignore that. And that's just if you get a heat step down, it'll go from that to that. But that will increase your output. Uh, sorry, your runtime. I mean, you're only getting 45 minutes according to them on high. So, okay, 45 minutes isn't bad on a small battery like this. So I quite like this. I'm not going to go over reflector types um, because I've done it in many other videos. Um, you know, and I don't want to bore people. Um, but this is an orange peel reflector. So the orange peel, I'll quickly give you an example without doing me little drawings because I'm, I'm not very well at the moment. So for example, you've got a smooth reflector there. See, that's smooth. So if I turn this on, smooth reflectors, it's trying to bounce the light and focus and fire it as far as possible. The problem is you're obscuring detail. Yes, you can pull the light away or lower the output, but you still have that problem. So yeah, the, your way around that to sort of even it out a little bit is to use an orange peel reflector. This has a orange peel reflector. So if we do that, you'll see it's obscuring the detail slightly less. There is some obscuring going on there, but there's a transition between the spill here. This is your spill. And then this is your spot. This is a reflected light. I mean, the far end of that is to use a TIR, but I'm not going to go into that on this, on this particular uh, review. So let's talk about the light. I mean, I like the size of it, but I just want to show you some other examples. I mean, the thing is, this only comes in one tint, which is a little bit disappointing, but it's not a bad tint. It's about 6,000 to 6,500K, 6, so it's more on the white end of the spectrum. I mean, compare that to something like the uh, C1 Prime, a very warm light. So you can see it's warm on the left, and then we'll run this. It's relatively white in comparison. You see that? So this is around 4,000K ish, and this is about 6,000 to 6,500 K. The difference being is, I mean, there are advantages to a warm light, and I prefer a warmer tint. To me, that looks more like sunlight. This looks less like sunlight. 
does that matter? It's a personal tasting. So don't let anyone ever say to you, you have to get warm or you have to get white. You don't have to do that. You have to get what you prefer. I just happen to prefer warm light because it looks more like sunlight. In other words, the light from the sun, once it's gone through the Earth's atmosphere and changes to this nice warm hue, but there's no right or wrong answer there. One of the other features which I neglected to tell you on this, there's a low battery um, system here. Now, unlike the M3s, which the buttons flash, I think it's the M3 which they put this on, you get a little red flash when the, for a low battery, the actual flashlight itself flashes. So when you're running it, if you've got less than 5%, you get three quick flashes when you try and run it. And if it's less than 1% left in the battery, in other words, dangerously low, um, I think that's about what less than 1%, it'll continuously flash. In other words, turn me off, you're running the battery too low, please charge me up. So I wanna go over some of the good and some of the bad points. So some of the good points, um, it's got a type C connector, for charge, I really like that. You're getting a free battery. The price is low. It feels nice. It's got an orange peel reflector, which I really like. It's a tail clicker. I don't understand why the UI goes backwards from high low to me high medium to low. I don't understand that, and I don't know why that you can't just quickly get to or have a turbo system. Don't really understand that. Um, I would maybe just change some of the UI. It's very small though. I like. I do like the reflector. You can't really tail stand it though. That's one problem. I mean, if you look at the M3s, you can tail stand those. If you're using it to flat fire off the ceiling during a power cut or something, you can't do that with this. It just falls over because the button's there. So that's a little bit of a shame. I mean, there are ways around this where you can have it half and half. You've got, you've got access to the button there, but you can still technically tail stand that. So they could have maybe added two extra sections, I would have personally done that. Um, and I wish there was more tint options and maybe it's add an e-lockout mode. I mean, you can physically lock it out if you want, um, but you know, that's that can be knocked on, unfortunately. So let's just put this to one side and I wanna talk about the options here. So I think they've done a really good job there. You get a nice pack with the battery, everything's included, you can charge it, you don't need to buy a charger. But I mean, you may also want to consider the on-the-road M3s. I, I really like them, and look at the size difference. You're getting a very similar output. Look, this is shorter. Yeah, you can't charge it, but you can charge this one. But then you get these daft flaps which let the water in, which I find a little bit, in, a little bit annoying. But they can be, they're okay. And I mean, it's a little bit thinner as well, if you see the diameter is slightly less. So it's a nice slimline torch. You know, it, 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 at first glance, it reminds me of the Jet Beam. Um, never remember the name of this one, the Jet 2MK, but it's not quite as short because it has a tail clicker which takes up space, whereas this is a rotary action. So you rotarize, which I know isn't a word to function that one there. So I think they've done a decent job, but you could also compare it to, and I know this is longer, but it's certainly thinner, the excellent Lumen Top. Um, tool double A, double A just signifies the style of battery that goes in there, and this is the V2. Fantastic output, look at that. In fact, I've done some testing on walls, and they actually have a very, very similar output. I'll show you together. There, look, they're very similar. I mean, there's a slight color difference, but they're very, very similar in their beam profile, if you see, look, look, look at those. Very, very similar, but I will show you outside. But I think that's something you may want to consider. I think that's a beautiful light. I like a lot of lumen tops, but this is a lot cheaper. And if you want to spend the big bucks, you could go for it. Army Tech, but I noticed a lot of subscribers slag these off and they say, look at all this stupid advertising. What's all this crap about? It's like a Nike t-shirt. I suppose they're right. I mean, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. I couldn't care less, but I can see the point. I mean, what is all this stuff? It should it not just have that and nothing else, but anyway. Um, and that the, uh, your other options in this size would be something like the night court tip. Great little light, excellent output. Um, I, I can highly recommend that. Um, it's smaller, obviously, look th thinner and not as high. And the night court tiny, which is about 380 lumens, even brighter than that, but a smaller battery. But again, nice, much, it's about half the weight, if that, of this, and that's rechargeable. Uh, but it's got one of those daft flaps, which I'm not a big fan of, so we'll turn that off. There you go. Um, your other options would be something like the Claris MI1C, which I think is underrated. I know a lot of people have a go at Claris, but I quite like the knurling. And you've got this aspherical lens over the top of the emitter, which is quite interesting. So you get a, a really big spread here, you see that? I, I find that quite interesting, and that's quite a good output. Um, not quite as high as this, but you know, decent. You're certainly not going to get this to travel any distance, whereas you will with that. Um, this is this is like a multi-purpose 
Um, it doesn't spread the beam out too much, but you've got a little bit of throw. Um, but I think they've done a good job. So let's move all this out of the way. Let's give it a, a mark. Right, I'm going to give this a seven. I, the reason being, it needs the UI needs sorting out. Um, I don't know why the UI goes backwards. I'd rather be able to get a, some sort something like a turbo mode, just with a few presses, and then three, four strobe or something like that. Um, the clip's okay. It's you know it does the job. I like the way it's out the way on the connection part here, and I would have added a, a sort of tail stand section, more tin options, an e-lock out. Um, but other than that, they've done an okay job. I'm going to give it a solid seven. No major problems. If you bought this, you'd enjoy it, and you do get a free battery, so they've done a pretty good job. So well done. Um, no major problems. So seven out of ten. Let's get outside, and I'm going to show you what this looks like outside. Now I'm a dumbass so I forgot to show you the free battery that you get. So before I quickly pop out, I'm just about to go out the door here. Here's the battery that you get for free. So it's not bad, it's a 700 milliamp hours and it's a 16340. So one of the smaller ones, like a CR123. Um, but 700 milliamp hours is pretty good. It's obviously a 3.7 volts because it's a lithium ion. But pretty good and it's free. Um, I can't really say much more than that. Obviously when it's full, it's going to be running at about 4.2 volts and then at its lowest, it's going to be hitting uh, 2.75. So pretty good, you get that for free. So it's a pretty good package. So enough of me waffling, I'm going to really get outside now.